Here's what we're going to do in this video. I've got this radio. It's a Jumper T15. If you don't have that radio, it doesn't matter as long as your radio runs the Edge TX operating system, which most of the people watching this have a Jumper or a Radio Master radio that runs Edge TX. As long as your radio runs Edge TX, the thing I'm going to show you in this video does apply to you. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take this momentary switch. Okay, we're not going to fix that sound, which is kind of horrifying. What we're going to do with this momentary switch is we're gonna make this switch do something different based on how long you hold it down. So if I just go like that, it'll do one thing. And if I go like that, it'll do another thing. Hmm. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Before we get into the video, I need to make sure that you know that this video is part of a series. I've been doing a series of videos about Edge TX, starting with really basic stuff and then moving forward into more advanced stuff. This video is towards the end of the series. So if you're watching this and going, uh, I just wanna learn how to set up my radio, not like program a computer to go to the moon, there's a link in the video description below to the full playlist and you should go back and start at video number one and then work your way forward. And then by the time you get here, you'll know, like you'll be able to go to the moon with your radio. But if you're ready to metaphorically speaking, go to the moon, let's do that today. Uh, and I've got here a completely fresh new model. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to just double check my mixer screen. Uh, let's see here, that is right here. I, um, I'm working on the T15 because I figured I've been doing a lot of tutorials with my small black and white screen radio, and I figured I'd throw a bone to the people who have the larger color touchscreen radios. If you do have a small black and white screen radio, by the time you get to this point in the series, you know that everything I'm showing you is there. It's just on a smaller black and white character-based screen instead of a color touchscreen. So hopefully you'll be able to follow along with the tutorial, even though this isn't your exact radio. And what I want to check is that I have some switches assigned to a channel. And sure enough, I don't. This is a brand new model. So the only thing that's been assigned are my main control sticks. And the first thing I'm going to need to do is add a mix for that uh, switch. But I'm not sure that I do want to do that. Because here's the thing, if I assign the mix to this switch, then when I press the switch, the channel will move. When I release the switch, the channel will move back. Anytime I wanna do something more complicated, there's usually gonna be logical switches involved. Logical switches let me uh, ask a question. Is a certain condition true or not? And, and based on that question, then we can make different behaviors occur. And the question that I wanna ask is, how long has the switch, that's switch SF. How long has switch SF been held down? Or to put it another way, has switch SF been held down for more than so many seconds? See, that's the thing. Um, a logical switch can only ask a yes or no question, a true or false question. So has the switch been held down for more than so many seconds? How many seconds? I don't know. Uh, let's pick five seconds, and if we don't like that later, we can just change it. So rather than starting in the mixes screen, I'm gonna go to the logical switches screen, and I'm gonna build the logic of the question that I'm trying to ask in the logical switches screen, and then once I've got the logical switches set up, uh, then I'll map that over to the, to the uh, mixer screen so it can actually be transmitted out uh, to the receiver. And so I'll add a logical switch. It doesn't matter what number you use here, just use an unused number. Here, we don't have any of them, so I'll just use LO1. And what I wanna do is I wanna say, is switch F SF held down? This logical switch will become true when switch SF is held down. And then we'll get to the time component later. And if we look in the functions, there isn't a function to say, like, is this switch held down? Uh, but what we do is we just choose and. And and is a logical operation that says this thing and this other thing are both true at the same time. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna say and switch SF held down. So I'll just tap V1, I'll hold switch SF down and then I'll hit it and there we go. Switch SF held down and V2 would be the other thing that we're anding together. And we're just gonna leave that blank. So an and with only one a component just tests whether that one component is true. So now we have a logical switch that becomes true. And if we look right here, you'll see as I push the switch, it becomes bold. And as I release the switch, it becomes not bold. So great, yay. That's not very useful. If all I wanted to know was whether switch SF was held down, well, then I could just 
map switch SF in the mixer screen and I would get the same result. So that brings us to the delay. And actually the first switch is going to be nothing, just SF down. Okay. So there we go. SF down. And then we're going to add a second logical switch and it is also going to be and SF down, hold SF, tap, tap, as if down. And here we're going to add the time component where we say this logical switch only becomes true if the switch is held down for a certain amount of time. And we do that with the delay parameter. So the delay parameter, let's set that to five seconds. Actually, can I just type? Can I just get a keyboard? Can I get a keyboard? No? You sure? Really seems like I should be able to get a keyboard here. This is how you know I don't work with color touchscreens and radios all the time. There's probably a way to get a keyboard. So now we've got delay set to five seconds. And if we look up here in the upper left, LO2 is not bold. If I hold that button down, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three, four, five seconds. After five seconds, it becomes bolded and becomes true. Okay. So now we have two logical switches. One of them will become true as soon as I press switch SF. And one of them will become true when SF has been held for five seconds. Wait for it. There we go. There's a little bit of a problem here. Do you see that after five seconds, both LO1 and LO2 are true? And that's not really what I want. Well, it might be what you want. It just depends on what kind of logic you're trying to build here. The way that I'm imagining it is, when I push the switch for four seconds, one thing happens. And then if I keep holding the switch, the first thing stops and the second thing starts. If you wanted the first thing to keep going and the second thing to also start going, then the logic that we have here is exactly right. LO1 comes true, the first thing is going, and then after five seconds, LO2 turns true, and the second thing starts going, whatever that thing is. But what I'm imagining is LO1 is true for four seconds, and then LO1 turns off and LO2 becomes true from five seconds on. So we have sort of a toggle. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go back to LO1 and we're going to edit it and we're going to add an AND parameter here. So LO1 is AND, the switch is held down, AND what else? AND, we're going to tap here, we're going to go to the logical switches and we're going to choose LO2, except that's not right. LO1 becomes true when switch SF is held and LO2 is true. Let's see how that works. That's not what we want though. It's not going to work right. Now, LO1 doesn't become true when I hold down the switch because LO2 is not true. And then after five seconds, one, two, three, four, five, they both become true at the same time. That's exactly wrong, but we're very close. What we actually want is to go to LO2, choose logical switches, we'll highlight LO2 and we'll hit invert. And now that little exclamation point is programmer speak for not. And what we're saying here is that LO1 will become true when switch SF is held down and LO true is false. And now watch. Initially, LO1 becomes true. And then as soon as LO2 becomes true, LO1 turns off because this parameter here no longer is true. And now we have a toggle. So now all we need to do is map that to our mixer screen. And the way that we map it to the mixer screen depends on what our aux modes are set up to do. Like for example, one thing I thought you could do is you could have a short press on the switch be your beeper. So you go beep, 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 beep. beep. And then a long press on the switch be your pre-arm mode. So pre-arm is an aux mode in Betaflight where you have to hold down a switch before you can arm. And if you don't hold down that switch, you flip the switch by accident, the quad refuses to arm. A lot of people like to use pre-arm mode. They consider it safe, but it's, you kind of run out of switches. And this momentary switch here, this radio doesn't have a ton of momentary switches, does it? So like, where am I gonna put my beeper? I also like my beeper to be on a momentary switch. Well, what I could do is this. And in fact, that's what we're gonna do. So let's go to our mixes screen now, and we're gonna add a mix. And so for example, uh, assuming we're using Express LRS, Channel five is gonna be our arming mode. And we're gonna set the source as SE. So let's check that by going to the outputs monitor on the radio. And if I just press the arm switch, we can see that channel five goes high and low. That's our arm disarm function. Now we will head back to the mixes and we will add another mix. This is gonna be on channel six and this is gonna be our pre-arm mode channel six. And what we want to do is 
we want that to be tied with the source of SF, but only when switch L01 is true. And we do that by hitting the switch parameter. We've introduced this in previous videos, switch LS, L01, okay? And then let's say that channel seven is our beeper mode, our beeper channel. Our source again is gonna be switch SF, but this is only gonna be uh, active when switch LO2 is true. And now, hold on, let me give you a better look at that before I get too far ahead of myself. So here we go. We've got our four main control channels. Channel five is our arming channel. And then channel six says, oh, that's wrong. T tilt X, what is that? That is an incorrect. Uh, source SF. There we go. I don't know what happened there. Source SF, please. There we go. Okay, good. Okay, uh, let me give you another look at the mixer screen. Sorry, I went a little too fast there. So channel five is our arming switch. That's just a normal box mode. Uh, channel six is tied to switch SF, but only when LO1 is true. That's our short press. Uh, and we're gonna make channel six be our beeper. And channel seven is tied to switch SF. And that's our long press because it's tied to LO2. That's gonna be our pre-arm mode. How exactly you set that up in Betaflight, you just go to the modes tab, you put the buzzer mode on channel six or aux whatever, and the pre-arm mode on channel seven. We're gonna show that in this video. And so now let's take a look. We go to the output screen. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, after five seconds, pre-arm. Fantastic. Now I can arm the quad. That's a little annoying. Maybe I'll set that to two seconds instead of five seconds. Or maybe I would do something completely different. Maybe I would make pre-arm be the short press because I'm gonna just be like pre-arm, arm. And I would make the buzzer be the long press. I don't know. The logic is up to you. Maybe I would do something completely different. The logic is up to you. The idea is that now you have the power to make the radio respond to how long you held the button down. And that's pretty freaking cool. My kids are trumping around upstairs. Sorry about that. Um, if you enjoyed the contents in this video, there is a whole lot more in the playlist linked in the video description below as well. I'm gonna put a card on screen in just a second. Before I do that, let me remind you that I support myself with donations from people like you on Patreon. I would love to have you as a subscriber to Patreon if you value the work that I do here and you want me to keep doing it. There's a link in the video description below, patreon.com. You can subscribe for as little as $2 a month. More if you feel like I've earned it, the amount is totally up to you. Just think of how much you think I'm worth every month and subscribe at that amount. Thank you so much. Here's that, play here's that playlist. I'll see you in the next one.